Hi, I'm Keith Ferrazzi, author of Never Eat Alone, and I decided that I was actually going to start looking at the subject of food, not just the subject of relationships around food. And who better to do that with than literally the very first master sommelier in the United States, Eddie, I wanted to thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with us today. What I want to do is I want to walk through the beginning to the end of a dining experience mm -hmm. as a host, right? So talk about, you know, how do you think in advance about a party that you're gonna throw? And then let's move our way the whole way through, very tactically as much as you can. Okay, well, I mean, you know, the first thing I wanna do is introduce people to things they've never had before because that's, that's what makes them feel special. You know, and um, one of the key postulates is that uh, appetite is money in the bank. If, if your guests run out of appetite, they can't be wowed by anything. So you've got to hopefully have them come over and not overdo the hors d'oeuvres, but give them something that it's of real substance they've never had before, so you get these aha moments. And you keep those aha moments going throughout. I keep so them going you, throughout, throughout. If you have too much hummus <coughs> and bread right up front, um, by People the time will you dine get on to, it. Right. They will dine on whatever you put in front of them. So right. make sure it, it counts, you know, if you're going to put any money in it, put it up front. Second thing is that... Um, I always serve two wines instead of one because you have a side-by-side -side comparison going on and you can relate to it. If you serve one wine, what can you relate it to? You, can't, you can only relate it to what's on your memory and you can't memorize something and log it to your hard drive. Mm -hmm. So I learned this in Bordeaux when I went to school that all tastings must be done side-by-side -side. and I suggest that you serve the wines before the food. Why? Everyone else serves the food and then brings the wine. If you serve wine after food, the wine becomes an afterthought. And if you've got some nice wines to show off to someone, and the way to do it is to take a $10 wine and show them the difference between a 10 and a 20, both maybe the same wines, but what do you get by spending a little more? What's, you know, what's the back end of a great dinner, and how would you punctuate that? Well, I, I mean, at the end of a dinner, you need to have something sweet, and a lot of people are used to port, but I go, no, we're going to do Madeira, mm -hmm. because Madeira is one of the most unbelievable wines that last forever and ever and most people never had it so I like to serve the Madeira you know and I like to have and always make sure that the dessert is not too sweet because it'll kill dessert wines and quite frankly you know you can serve a dessert wine as dessert it doesn't have to go with food you don't have to make these things happen you know you don't have to have an intermezzo palate cleanser your palate doesn't get dirty it doesn't need any cleansing that's a silly thing you know so the idea is you know serving things that are that are that are punctuated, small, little, little half bottles that are kind of fun, ice wine from Germany. And those, I, by the way, are, are not terribly expensive. No, no, they're not. Um, they're not. I, I, see, I see those kind of uh, ice wines. You, you, you think all of a sudden, oh, I'm going to have to spend all this money for a dessert wine. You think Saturns, et cetera. You can get some really nice. You can get some great stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and there's all kinds of stuff from Spain and places that, you know, you never imagined that uh, that's really good. What's, what's the perfect dessert to serve with a nice sweet wine? Just a simple cheesecake or well, something I like mean, that? Well, I mean, you know, I like the desserts to not exceed the sweetness level of pound cake. So you're, you're kind of limiting yourself there. But yeah. shortbread cookies without sugar on them, things, I mean, you, if the wine is really good, you want to set it up on a pedestal. You want to How about champagne at the end of the meal? Um, no, champagne always starts the beginning of the meal. Champagne is the greatest wine on the planet. And um, you, you want to serve it to your guests when they're totally starving and they're going to get it. Um, and then I like to choose food to play a subordinate role to great wines, mm -hmm. such that the wine is on a pedestal and the food is kind of down there. You're making you're, the wine's a star. If the wine is reasonable and inexpensive, you know, the food and wine can be the same, or you can have troughs of uh, lasagna really inexpensively with $7 wines and have a lovely party with that. It's all depending on how much experience they have and where your budget's at and whether the wine's more important, the food's more important, or we're doing leveled.